Heidi ho there my lovies welcome back to crazy but not dangerous I'm Shorty Vaughn time for dinner again we're having Andrew's favorite meal we're having a um, bacon cheeseburger pasta he loves it it's one of his favorites he asks for it all the time and today I'm glad to be making it for him you've seen me do make this before but you know some recipes are just worth repeating also today I'm going to be going over some tips to help de-stress Thanksgiving. Yeah, we've got just a little bit more than one week before Thanksgiving and Thanksgiving can be stressful. Got a few tips and suggestions to help you survive the day. Yay, hooray. My poor mother would make Thanksgiving. Now, my mother wanted all of her children with her on the holidays and so she would invite all of their in-laws the not just not just the brother-in-laws but their parents any siblings any stragglers it was not unusual for us to have upwards of 70 or 80 people for thanksgiving and my mother always cooked at least one huge bird the biggest one that she could find also an enormous ham sometimes an enormous roast beef Sometimes multiples, depending on, yeah, the woman would work herself to death, to the bone. Vats of mashed potatoes and um, the dressing. Yeah, she could never make enough dressing for all of us. We've had incidences, overdressing, stabbings, yeah, the whole nine yards. Anyhow, yeah, she would work her fingers to the bone and then the day of thanksgiving she would put herself together the best she could by the time we got to the meal like her hair would be all askew and there would be mascara running from like crying and her face would be all hot and flushed from sticking her head in the oven to face the bird all the time and kids would run around wild and terrorize the whole house and yet there somebody always arguing about something yeah there were a lot of people a lot of drama a lot of work what have you my mother wanted things the way that she wanted them and was not willing to delegate very much and I would tell you right now that that's a big mistake if you can delegate you need to do it if you can get somebody to help you do something there's no shame in asking most people are more than willing to help and you should have a list of things that you think that can be delegated and in advance ask that person you know this know their skill set what I'm saying like my sister Sherry cannot cook she cannot cook anything she cannot hardly even make toast and she makes the world's worst mashed potatoes so there's no way in Hades I'm asking her to make the mashed potatoes Maybe she can make the dinner rolls so she can keep an eagle eye on them. But more so than that, I would want her to do something like make sure everyone has a drink. Take everyone's coat, you know, and, and help and help wrangle up the kids. That's usually my job. That's the job I like. Now, my sister Jackie does Thanksgiving since my mother has passed away. And Jackie, she's got a big house and a big family. She has six kids and a baby on the way in December so she is really 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 pregnant really pregnant Whew. yeah she looks like she's ready to go any second <clears throat> pardon me so my job when I go to her house I know is to kind of wrangle the kids and that's honestly my favorite part I've got a big tote it's got a project or two in it for the kids something to keep them all occupied and in between that you know they'll jump on the trampoline watch me at shorty watch me yeah and, and I love it and I'll sit there and watch them endlessly yeah so we have we have a good time everyone kind of has a job uh, Jackie also does not cook out of, out of all of my sisters really only I cook and then my sister Patty she you she she would cook as well she was an excellent cook and unfortunately has passed so we can no longer um, rely on her kitchen expertise but uh, we'll, we'll, we'll be missing her for a long time for a lot of Thanksgivings but you know 
that's also part of being together on Thanksgiving is enjoying each other. So don't let any one person get too frazzled that they are not having a good time on Thanksgiving. That's a shame. So I'm going to get some hamburger. I'm going to get some stuff. We'll get down to it and make a little dinner. All right, I've got a pound of ground beef that I took out of my freezer and thawed in the refrigerator. That's the best way to thaw. It's also the best way to thaw your turkey. So, you know, now is the time to start thinking about if you have a frozen turkey or if you have purchased a frozen turkey, time to start thinking about how you're going to thaw it. So, one of my favorite tips for Thanksgiving is the idea of using a cooler, an insulated cooler, to expand your cold storage. Is it a place where you can keep the drinks? Is it a place where you can, you know, store some vegetables until time to prep? You know, this, that, and other things. Things that are not potentially hazardous per se, um, but, you know, a little bit of ice, a few ice packs, a little change out every day, and keeping those things um, out of the danger zone. So, yeah, a, a, a cooler to expand your refrigeration storage, get your needs out there. Now, my mother had two large um, ovens. She had one stovetop, two refrigerators, more freezers than you can shake a stick at, and, and she had all, two dishwashers. She had all of the equipment for a family um, of, of our size. And so, uh, yeah, a lot of it, a lot, she was very lucky. I do not have such a setup. I don't know many people with the kind of kitchen setup that my mother had. She could feed the army. And sometimes, I'm sure to her, it felt like she did. Most of my pan sizes are, are, are not her pan sizes. She had great big, the woman was strong. She was strong as an ox. I was talking to my friend Karen. Hi, Karen. And she was asking me, about boiling pasta. I can no longer boil pasta on the stove and then get add the pan over, drain it in the sink. So that's something that I have to do to help. So if I was making something like that, like boiled potatoes or what have you, I'm going to have to schedule that for a time when I know that I have somebody strong to help me get my boiled potatoes off of the stove. So that's something that I would plan ahead gonna go ahead and just give this ground beef a little brown up so it can be its best self. Just gonna go ahead and stick the lid on there. Also another one of my favorite Thanksgiving hacks is um, a thermos. Now my mother had a bunch of gravy boats and she would poise them at different parts of the table so that they didn't have to travel very far. But I think a thermos is a great way for keeping your gravy. Um, I learned this when I was working at various restaurants, sometimes for quick service ideas, like um, like a Sunday hollandaise brunch, you know, eggs benedict, that kind of thing, that we would put the hollandaise sauces in the um, thermos carafes, and that way it's really easy to pour it on, put a little garnish on, and out your dish goes. This is much easier to pass around the table. There are no spills, and it keeps it warm. It will also keep your sauce from breaking. So, yeah, a thermos. A thermos for your gravy or any hot sauces that you might be serving at Thanksgiving. Think that this is just a great little tip. Yay, hooray. And, and I got this one with a really old um, subscription I had to Javalia, but it still keeps hot things hot, cold things cold. I just keep on using it. I hate to get rid of things that work. I like things that last a long, long time, and that thermos has, yeah, that thermos has just done its job over the years. So I'm just browning up this ground beef. Someone to wrangle the kids. So... Um, yeah, that's a great idea. It keeps those little, it keeps those little monsters from driving you all crazy. 
but that might also include a snack for the kids because it if you're like my family we would get together at noon dinner wouldn't be served until three and in between kids are hungry kids are crying they're hungry all the time so a snack for the kids in addition to some activities and there's lots of great free coloring pages i went over to the home depot and i bought myself a two dollar and 95 cent bag of river rocks and then i went over to dollar tree and bought some dollar 25 tempera paints and a cheap package of um paint brushes got a couple of newspapers and laid that out let those kids paint rocks they loved it paint the front and then you know while well, let it dry for a few minutes and then I'll let the let you paint, paint it the other side. And then those rocks went out in my garden and the kids still love to come and look at their rock. And oh, I did just spray them a little bit with a uh, white clear, um, you know, polyurethane kind of thing. So yeah, the kids still like to come over and take a look at all of the rocks in my uh in my garden they love that when can we do that again shorty Vaughn? when can we do that again aunt shorty yeah yes yeah, so um that's one thing that i had great success with so and then they're going to need like a little snack it doesn't have to be anything big and nothing that makes a big mess maybe it's some fruit roll-ups or boxes of raisins or you know just something to help keep them filled up and occupied until dinner time because kids don't eat much anyhow so yeah, just that, that's just one other little thing. Really, honestly, the gravy in the um, carafe, in the thermos, that is one of my absolute favorite hacks because inevitably somebody would spill gravy on my mother's tablecloth and there was, she wouldn't say anything, but there would be this look of disapproval. Lord, and okay, I'll be honest, it was usually me. I'm the gravy spiller. Yeah. Look at this, look at this kind of chopped up in here. Andrew doesn't really care how big the pieces of ground beef in are, are in here. He likes it no matter what. He doesn't care if things are a little bit chunky. Because you know, we're a little bit informal. This is about halfway cooked through. So to this, I'm gonna go ahead and add some onion flakes. Now these come to me all the way from Washington State, sent to me by my friend Karen. Thank you so much, my baby. They are lovely and beautiful and tasty and delicious. And onion flakes, I think these are a real life saver and a real time saver. Has all of the taste, all of the feels, but none of that chopping effort. That could also be a good little um, thing to take away for your Thanksgiving prep. What can you buy? that's already prepped up, that doesn't have you standing in the kitchen for a million years chopping on something. Well, a little bit of, maybe a little bit of uh, dehydrated chopped onion. And let's see, what else are we gonna have? I'm gonna add a little bit of paprika. About one teaspoon. And that's, for me, a smoked paprika, just to give it that good smoky deep taste, like hamburgers that I cooked out on the grill. I'm also going to put in about one teaspoon of granulated garlic. Hello, Gilroy. My friend, Kim, is going to Thanksgiving at a related a relations house at her husband's uncle's house anyhow they are using an app to coordinate their thanksgiving got some sugar-free spike this has got all kinds of stuff in it it's gonna be fantastic it's like an all-purpose seasoning without salt out give it some of that so they are going to his uncle's house for Thanksgiving and they are a big family and there are a lot of them well and you know they're doing potluck any of you ever do potluck for the, for the holidays 
I think that's a great way to save time, effort, money. Everybody brings their everybody brings their specialities. Yeah, everybody gets a chance to be a hero at a potluck. I like that. Um, anyhow, though, because there are so many of them, they're actually using an app, and this is not sponsored. But they're using a potluck app. I'm telling you what, they've got an app for everything nowadays. So they are using a potluck app called Bring It. And anyhow, you set up the time, the day, where it's at, where is, the, where, where is your event being held at. And then if you have a theme, you can put in all of the parameters of what you would like to serve or see served at your potluck and then send that out, an invitation to join it um, via text message through your contacts list. Then it goes out as a broadcast. And then all of your participants in your potluck can then sign up for whatever it is that they want to bring. That way you don't end up with 20 pumpkin pies and only one thing a mashed potato. I'm going to turn this down a little tiny bit. There we go. Got some re regular yellow mustard because that's what I like on a hamburger. Gonna give that about three good tablespoons there. I also have some ketchup because that's what I like on a burger. Barbecue sauce would be great. You could put a little ranch powder in here you know, if you were so inclined. That would be fantastic. I've got the Costco bacon crumbles. I'm going to go ahead and get those in. I'm going to put in about one fourth cup. Anyhow, you use this app, bring it, to set the parameters for your potluck. What you want people to bring, what's already been taken, what still needs to be brought, yada, yada, yada. Maybe your family loves sweet potatoes. I do. I love, any of you love sweet potatoes? I love sweet potatoes. And I love them in all sorts. I like the sweet potatoes just baked. I like mashed sweet potatoes. I like sweet potato casserole with almonds and maple syrup. That's real simple and easy. I like the marshmallow. I like the pineapple and the sweet potatoes and the coconut. Um, yeah, with a little chopped macadamia nuts on top. Yeah, I can dig, I can dig that. Anyhow, so, so you could put in that you're looking for someone to bring one of the three kinds of sweet potato casseroles. There's recipes on there. Um, you know, it keeps you all coordinated and it also allows you to the, the ability to check in with your, with people with your bringers of things to the potluck and stay all coordinated. So I think that is an excellent app and an excellent way. Got about three cups of hot water here. I'm gonna go ahead and add that right on in. Yay, hooray. So yeah, stay coordinated. Go ahead and write yourself out a game plan. Start tonight. If you are responsible for cooking everything for everyone, and you are just that person, well, okay, go ahead. Start writing out your timeline. What can you do ahead of time? What do you need to do the day before, the night before, the morning of, and before you serve dinner? What time are you going to serve dinner? Do y'all serve dinner like late lunch, lunch time, uh, dinner time? You know, when, when do you all have Thanksgiving? Everybody's different. Everybody's got a different thing. Jackie usually serves hers, I would say, probably at about 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And that's just fine. That way I can get home before dark. Um, if I am cooking Thanksgiving and it's just Andrew and I, I do not bother with a turkey. I have a recipe that I have made for Thanksgiving's. And it is quick, easy, inexpensive, and completely delicious. I'll be, I'll be sharing that with you. So there we go. We've got, we've got all of that in. I also want to go ahead and add a little bit of tomato in here. I 
I have a Roma tomato. I'm just going to give that a chippity chop and get that in here because I like tomato on my bacon cheeseburgers. And we are going to have a nice side salad to go with that. So no worries. Anyhow, yeah, Thanksgiving. So, yeah, we have 75, 80 people coming to Thanksgiving and a whole variety of, you know, opinions, and most of them quite strong in my family, I'll be honest with you. So I'm the question asker in my family, trying to keep everybody on target, keeping everybody, you know, calm, cool, collected, and focused on the reason for the day that we are all getting together as family because we love one another and that we want to celebrate our family and being thankful for each other, thankful that we, for, you know, the people that are still with us, thankful for the people that have gone on to their reward, thankful for, you know, the food that we eat and that we all have a place to gather and that we can all be together and, and, you know, focus on the meaning of the day. Got my tomato all chopped up in here. Going to go ahead and add that on in. Perfect. More or less tomato, whatever. You know, that's what I had. It'll be fine. But I'm the question asker. Um, especially if we have people in our family, uh, people that, you know, that I don't see very often, like my sister's in-laws or what have you, uh, instead of asking questions like, what do you do for a living? You know, what, what question I might ask is, what's the strangest thing that you've Googled lately? And, 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 uh, and I will, I will give an example for, ex uh, I, I example, I googled how to fix um, a double hung window because I couldn't get it to go up and down anymore. And, and believe it or not, I found, yeah, the answer on Google, found a YouTube video, watched it, had some silicone spray and just gave, gave it a whirl and, and, and did a few things on the inside of the window to reset it and it's back to normal. And so you, that, that's a conversation starter. Living or dead, who would you have to dinner? Um, the would you rather game. Now, I love the would you rather game. So long as you can keep people on target and doesn't like, kind of go out there into the, you know, into the danger zone. Sex, religion, politics, money. Those are, those are, those are the topics that I want my family to stay away from because those are all triggers for somebody. So would you rather... Would you rather lose your sense of taste or your sense of smell? Now, I know those two kind of go together, but you know. Um, would you rather go to the mountains on vacation or to the ocean? Right. And it's okay. Now, these are the kinds of topics that we can kind of get into a family debate about. You know, the, the pros and cons of going to the mountains versus the pros and cons of going to the ocean. Um, for me... I don't really care if we go to the ocean or we go to the mountains. I love vacation and I haven't had one in a really long time and I could, I could seriously go for a trip to either place. Probably the ocean simply because I know how much Andrew loves to swim in the ocean. You have never seen a man with a bigger smile and a happier face and just this overall sense of yeah, this is awesome. Look of happiness and well-being as Andrew in the ocean. And he's a pretty serious guy. So, you know, if I can get a smile out of him, I'm going to take that as a win any day. So, yeah, keep subjects light. And, and if you know that there's a button pusher in your group, you know, it, it's okay to have a conversation with them even a couple of days in advance, like I have a friend, and so I would have a conversation with him. I love you very much. I want very much for you to come to Thanksgiving. I'm just letting you know that we're keeping this Thanksgiving light and fun 
And um, if you have a game or something that you would like to play, please bring it because we would like to really just keep everything light and fun. And so you want to try to use a little bit of diplomacy. I'm going to turn this down just a little tiny bit more because it is getting up there. And I have um, pasta. I have 10 ounces of pasta. This is a shells and cheese premium dinner. Got this over at my Dollar Tree and it's got a lovely cheese squeeze packet. So I'm not mad at those one bit. And I'm going to go ahead and throw these on in. And I put three cups of water in there because I know with these shells, they need a little bit extra water. They also sometimes need a little bit more cooking time than just the 12 minutes. So I'm going to set this for about 14 minutes. That's how long I'm going to give it. I don't want my pasta to overcook. I'm going to start it off with the lid off because I want those noodles to cook through, but I also need some of this liquid to evaporate and be, be its myself. It's got great smells. It's got all of the smells. So yeah, keep your Thanksgiving light and airy. No hard feelings and yeah, no stabbings. For those of you that don't know the story, my mother made the best dressing in the whole world. Dry as a bone and you cut it with a knife, serve it like cake, and you pour gravy all over it. And we would fight to the bitter death over the last piece. And th this one time, almost literally. So my sister Sandy and my sister Patty were getting off the school bus. They knew that there was only one piece of dressing left at the house. And they both raced home to get it. And then my sister Sandy, she takes it out of the refrigerator. There's a knife kind of stuck in it um, from the carving of everything and cutting the stuff you don't have you anyhow someone had left a knife in it and Sandy took the piece of stuffing out and went to go put it on her plate and my sister Patty took the knife and stabbed my sister Sandy right through the hand and and yeah yeah had to go to the hospital and get stitches and Patty ended up with the piece of dressing because you know it's hard to eat when you when, when you're bleeding. Anyhow, so yeah, no stabbings. No, no stabbings at Thanksgiving. Keep everything light. Keep everything fun. And don't be ashamed. If your pies are from the grocery store, nobody, nobody's going to be mad about it. Okay, your pies do not have to be homemade. If you got pies at the grocery store um, and you've got some ready wet or some ice cream, they are going to be just fine. They are tasty and delicious. If your entire gro if your entire Thanksgiving dinner is catered by the grocery store, my Albertsons offers it, but it is outside of our price range, really. Um, but you're doing yeah, all catered items, hot hot diggity, good for you, yeah, fantastic. You might have time to put together a lovely centerpiece or something like that. Yep. However you do it, however you do it, if you're having a Thanksgiving TV dinner with the turkey and the stuffing and a little bit of berry compote and the brownie. That one is one of my favorites. Yeah, good for you. That's all. It'll be all right. No big deal. Anyhow, I'm going to let this boil for about 12 more minutes now and we'll come back and add the cheese and all the good stuff to it. Yay, hooray. Okay, so this has reduced quite significantly. It still has plenty of sauce in it. And I am going to go ahead and just pop the lid on that and let it simmer, soak up all of those delicious juices and do its thing before we put the cheese in. Also, let's talk about some more about Thanksgiving. Let's talk about turning down the heat. So as people arrive, as you have more people in your house, the house might already be hot from the stove, from the oven, from whatever else is going on turn the heat down a little tiny bit because I know in our household growing up with so many people that it was hotter than blue blazes in there. Yeah. And when people are hot, it is, they sometimes become more quick to anger. So we want to, we, we want to keep cool heads. So just go ahead. Maybe you turn down that heat a little bit. 
Maybe you have a family walk to relieve tension. Maybe you all go out and play a little football. Yeah. It was, really wasn't our thing when you have, you know, seven sisters. And, yeah, yeah it, it were, football was not in the cards for us. But, you know, maybe you go for a walk. Maybe you take five minutes and you find yourself a nice, quiet place to take a few breaths because your relations are a lot. My relations are a lot. And, like, when we have family dinner, I do. I go hide in the garage for five minutes nobody's out there nobody yeah nobody comes out there anyhow I go out in the garage and I just have five minutes of serenity peace and quiet all to myself and also another thing like I'm not like my mother I do not have two wall ovens I do not have two dishwashers yada 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 a sign cleanup crew yeah a, who wants you didn't bring anything do you want to be on dishes yes please and thank you also, get yourself some crock pot liners or what have you. Those crock pot liners also work in the oven. So, you know, if you don't want to scrub a lot, you can line your dishes that you're cooking in with those crock pot liners and then just throw everything in the trash. I think it's okay to splurge on that day. Because I don't have two wall ovens and what have you, I need all of the help I can get with keeping things warm. Now, my Easy Bake Oven hat goes down to 150 degrees. That keeps things nice and warm, so I can store things in there. I can also do certain things in the crock pot on warm, like mashed potatoes with plenty of butter and milk and what have you. And I can just click my crock pot over to warm or to low and know that those mashed potatoes are going to be fantastic. You know, once I get them, I can mash them and everything and just go ahead and put them into that crock pot. I also have a turkey roaster and I often use that for making a large roast, a turkey, a ham. I think it's multi-purpose. I've done big vats of chili in it because it serves and it holds so many servings. So maybe I'm cooking my turkey in the turkey roaster, leaving my oven open for, you know, all of the delicious. Uh, green bean casserole or the the uh, sweet potato bake with the with the marshmallows on it dinner rolls that kind of thing also there is no harm in reducing your thanksgiving menu maybe you're having you know sweet potatoes uh green bean casserole mashed potatoes a turkey and some uh gravy maybe y'all don't like gravy don't make it It'll be okay. Absolutely. Try not to overcook your bird. But, you know, that gravy can hold and hide a multitude of sins. Your bird's a little dry, a little extra gravy just gets that, gets that just right. Just perfect. Anyhow, yeah, it's okay to simplify Thanksgiving. You do not have to make everybody's favorite dish. And, and don't be afraid to farm things out to people. If somebody says they want to help, can you make drinks? Can you set up the kids' table? Can you take care of the kids for a little while? Um, something to do ahead of time. Maybe you clean your guest's bathroom ahead of time. And, and, and try to avoid the pre-dinner, run around the house, shoving all of your piles of things into the closet. Just, you know what? It's family. That's how, that's how you live. You don't have to worry... Yeah, just, it, it'll be okay. Nobody cares if you have a big stack of mail. Now, if you have a big stack of mail right next to your stove, go ahead and just move that somewhere else. Reduce the chance of fire. If you're frying your turkey, well, you know, I got no tips for you on that because I have never fried a turkey before. It looks, it's too dangerous for me. And, and yeah, I, I don't think I could do it successfully without burning my house down. I do not want the fire department to come to my house. So just take a look around, make sure that everything's safe, that you don't have any potential tripping hazards or fire hazards or what have you. And yeah, turn, turn the thermostat down a little bit. You know, it, it, my mother would set it at 80 and we would all be sweating to death. My mother needed a sweater.
Okay, this looks fantastic. It has just the right amount of sauce. I can tell that that pasta is just at the right doneness. I'm going to go ahead and add our cheese to it. I'm using this cheese packet today. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. Shredded cheese would probably be good. Oh, cheese. Yes, please. I'm going to serve this tonight with a nice side salad. A nice side salad. Now that's something that you can ask, you know, somebody that doesn't cook to bring. Maybe somebody that doesn't cook, they bring a side salad. Maybe somebody that doesn't cook, maybe you're, you're going to use um, paper plates and plastic utensils. That's a nice thing for somebody who doesn't cook to bring. Yeah, that, I'm, that's a hero in my opinion. So that's something that I always try to farm out when we have family dinner to one of my sisters that doesn't cook. Well, most of them. Yeah, Melissa, Jackie, Sherry, you know, one of them that doesn't cook. You can bring the, bring the place plastic plates. And, and this one can bring the plastic forks and what have you. Because I don't want to do all of those dishes. So there we go. I think that looks good. Not mad at that one bit. Hot diggity. Okay, I think that looks fantastic. I'm just going to let that sit and simmer for a few minutes. And then we're going to get ready to eat. Hot diggity. I'm going to go get the TV tray set. I'm going to get Jeopardy all queued up. And I'm just going to go ahead and turn that on to low so it stays nice and hot. Ooh, it smells good. Yum oh, plenty of cheese. Yes, please. Hot diggity. Get a little tomato in there. Yum. Okay, I've also made a nice side salad to go with it. So that's what's for dinner tonight over here. Yippee skip. Oh yeah, it's got all the smells. Yippee skippy, hot diggity. All right, my lovies. Well, hope that you had some interesting ideas for, you know, de-stressing your Thanksgiving. Remember to have a good time and enjoy your loved ones and squeeze them all up and squeeze all the babies. And, and don't forget, maybe a little something, a little extra special treat for your furry friend. Like Hazel. Hazel wants a yum yum. She's like, hey, lady, it's time for dinner. I gotta go. I gotta go feed Hazel. Gotta feeding time at the zoo with the humans and the dogs. Anyhow, we gotta go. Be good. Be careful. Look both ways. I'll see you next time. Big old smooches. Huge squeeze See you next time. Thanks for watching Crazy But Not Dangerous. Bye now.